His name is John C. <laughs> Awesome, man. Oh my gosh. You guys, I lost my place now. I was so <laughs> sidetracked. Wow. That's a uh, John Cena. <laughs> Do, can't see me. <laughs> okay. Wow. Who, who did that? Who thought of that? All right, Xander. Man. So is that the new thing now we have is hype music or you come up to the pulpit? Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, what's up, Hope Chapel? How are you? Good? Wow, it's so good to be here. I love this church. I love you guys, and I'm so happy you're here. If you're visiting with us, we just want to thank you for coming. Wow, it's so good. Hey, well, let's get started. Do me a favor. Grab your Bibles with me, okay, or your phones, and uh, open it up to the book of Proverbs, chapter 7. Proverbs, chapter 7. If you don't own a Bible, um, I say this every time I teach, please grab this Bible in the back for free. We want to make sure everybody has a Bible here at Hope Chapel, you can take it, you can steal it, and you can say that you stole that church, okay? Also, grab uh, these half-sheet notes as well. If you don't have notes, raise your hand really high. This is our teaching notes. We're going to follow along, fill in the blanks, and uh, we're going to learn about something today. Today, I want to talk about temptations. Okay, I just got your attention. Not the temptations, the band, okay? How many remember them? Okay, uh, okay, you do. What song do, is famous? My girl, my girl, talking about... Okay, I can't sing it. The temptations. We're not talking about those temptations, but we're talking about real, gut-honest temptation. And I'm not trying to single anyone out this morning because all of us are in the boat together. And so let's lay a foundation or some groundwork. Let me ask you, are you a human being? Yes. yes. Do you struggle to do what is right? Yes. yes, we all do. Every single day, there's not one of us in this room who does not get tempted. Why do I know that? Because the Bible that we read, there is a tempter called the devil. He's our adversary. He's the one that we fight good and evil against. And he roams around like a roaring lion, um, ready to devour anyone at any given moment. Imagine with me a mean, hatred, vicious, ferocious lion stalking you like this little, this guy. <laughs> no, that's not right, Xander. The next slide, that's blue. There it is. A ferocious lion. He's vicious. And he's mean, and he's cunning, and he's crafty, and he's sneaky, and he's looking for a weak area in your life to strike. And so we must be aware as a church that he never, ever gets tired of us. He never gets tired of tempting us. He's always on the hunt, and he never takes a vacation. Um, how many ever took a vacation before? You just forget about all your problems, right? Hopefully you do, or I don't know, maybe you don't. But you just are on vacation. Well, the devil never does that. One of my wise mentors, he told me this, the devil does not like us, nor does he like God. And I can go as far to say, theologically, that he hates us. That everything about us, what we represent, he does not like. And he tirelessly fights 24-7 to kill, steal, and destroy everything that God created that was good. That's his job. In fact, he tried to trip up Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. Do you remember that? Jesus, the Son of God, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted. And that three times the devil came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness to get him to fall, to trip, to sin. And each time Jesus, the Bible says, denied the devil's temptations with what? Anybody want to guess? What did he deny? What did he use? The Word of God. He overcame. Jesus was the only person in the history of this world who never sinned. In fact, up here on the screen, Hebrews 4.15, let's say it nice and loud together. Ready? Go. Jesus understands every weakness of ours because he was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not 
sin. Church family, this gives me hope, amen? Listen to me. Jesus relates to us what we go through. Each and every one of us, our daily activity, he understands because he was human just like us. He was 100% God, 100% human, and he knows the realities of what sin and temptation can do. And if he can win, we can surely win too, amen? Amen. If Jesus can win, we can win in this life. I just want to be transparent with you. I, I was thinking about this, praying about this. This is such a heavy topic. I get tempted. That's right. At Costco. That's right. When I see bacon at Costco, I want bacon. I wish I could have bacon every time I go to Costco. When I see tri-tip at Costco, I want tri-tip. When I see pistachios, I want them. And you know what? I got them, right? I did. I got them. I spent 18 bucks. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. When I see a high-lifted uh, Toyota trucks come and park right next to me in my little Kia, like, go-kart, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> if you have a Toyota pickup, I envy you. No, I, I, no, I really want one. Costco is a dangerous place to be. But let's just get honest, okay? I, I just want to get honest. Let's just tear down all the fluff. Men, at the beach. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When you're at the beach and you see something that you like and it's delightful, do you look? Do you double look? Do your eyes get wide? Do you stare? Do you, do you fantasize and entertain what you see. And ladies, let me tell you something. You're not off the hook. You're not off the hook. What if you see something, you know, big, nice, handsome man strolling the beach? You know, that's what my wife says about me, you know. And, 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 and he, he, you see that and you go, oh, I want. And, and let me tell you, what do we do in those moments when the, dev, the devil, he whispers to us. He's so sneaky. He says, go ahead, take delight, entertain, fantasize. You deserve it. Nobody knows what's going on in your mind. But how many know God knows what's going on? He knows what you're thinking. He knows your thoughts from afar. So what tempts you? Is it a click on a computer? Is it a swipe of the credit card? Is it a cheating in a relationship? What is it? Because we all confessed before we started this teaching that we all are tempted. So let me ask you, what is it? Because I bet you know, and I'm here to remind us this morning, the devil knows. And so really my prayer as we go through this teaching is this. We must be students of temptation. We must learn the art and the skill of what he tries to trap us with. We must not be naive and, and think that we're strong enough because no one in this room is strong enough. We need the Holy Spirit's help. We're going to talk about that at the end. We, know, we must know what's tempting us, and we mu must go to the classroom. We must learn in the classroom of others who have gone before us in the Bible so we can understand what temptation does. You know, that's why God gave us the Word of God, is that there are people in this Word that were tempted and they fell and they struggled. There are people that overcame, and so there are models for us, and so that's why we go to the Word, and you'll notice on the top of your teaching, I titled my teaching, Temptation 101, Discovering Everything You Need to Know About It. I want to talk about temptation's tricks, traps, and tips, the T's of temptation. Can we do that? First, the temptation tricks. How many are tricksters, okay? You like to play games with people, okay? Nobody, okay? Okay, just one, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jordan, for being honest. You like to play games with people, like, you know, not like bad games, but good games, right? Okay, the devil is a trickster, and he likes to ha do temptation tricks on us. And this is what the Bible calls subtle deceptions that sneak up and prey on us. And as we go through the book of Proverbs, we've been reading it, especially through the summer, it has a lot to say about temptation. Um, Proverbs 7 gives us a great example. Solomon is encouraging his son not to give in to sexual temptation. And up here on the screen, we're going to read it in the Word. Notice in Proverbs chapter 7, notice the tricks that subtle deceptions uh, take place 
I want you to notice this because it's a lengthy portion of Scripture, but I think it's, a, it's worth the read for us this morning as we go through this, okay? Proverbs 7, verse 6. At the window of my house, it says, I looked down the lattice and I saw the simple. I noticed the young men, a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day was fading, as the dark of night set in, then came out a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is unruly, defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. Verse 13, catch this. She took hold of him and kissed him with a brazen face. She said, today I made my vows. I have food for my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you and I found you. I've covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband is not home. He has gone on a long journey, and he took his purse filled with money and will not be home until full noon. Verse 21, listen carefully. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to a slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose till the arrows pierced his liver, like a bird darting in, uh, into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his what? Life. What's happening here? We have a young, naive man. We have a forbidden woman tempting him with sexual affairs. And did you catch any of her tricks along the way of deception in this portion of Scripture? Okay, if you didn't, she goes in for the kill. Here are a few tricks that, that, that I just want to draw out of this text. Okay, number one, the first trick that we must know that the devil will use will always be this, isolation. Isolation. Verse 7, notice that he was going down the street near her corner, walking in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day set in, he was alone in the dark. Then out came the woman to meet him. So what temptation wants to do is corner us in isolation where no one is looking, where our guard is down. Have you ever had that place in your life, that moment before where your guard is down and you're vulnerable? That's where the devil likes to attack the most, when you're vulnerable, when nobody's looking. That's when he strikes. It says that she, was, she saw him, she looked for him, and she found him in the corner, in the dark places. So we got to know as a church, listen, we got to know our surroundings, where we go. We got to be wise that where we put our feet, where we walk, and what we get into, we have to understand that that's where the devil can strike the most is when we are all by ourselves. What does he do when he prowls around looking for something to kill in a herd? What does he go after? The young, the weak, the one who was left alone out of the herd. So we have to be mindful wherever we go, we can't be by ourselves. We have to be know that, that the devil will tempt in those lonely, dark places of our life. Okay, the second trick, fill this one in your blanks, to watch out for is instant gratification. This is why being tempted is still so good at the moment, because it gives us instant gratification. Notice in verse 14, she said, I have covered my bed with colored linens from fine Egypt. She wasn't pulling no punches. She's perfumed my, she says, I perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. Okay, we all know what was going on here. Okay, if you don't, ask somebody. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. We know what's happening. And do you see how temptation glitters with a false sense of satisfaction? How it allures us only to crave it more, and once we found it, oh, we find out we want it more and more. Let's drink deeply together in love. And for this young man, oh, it was a moment of pleasure that cost him 
his very life. And I think of us today, is it really worth it to have the quick fix? Is it really worth it to be on the computer late at night? Is it really worth it to flirt behind our spouse's back? Is it really worth it to engage in those moments of temptation all by ourselves? just for that moment of satisfaction. Because instant satisfaction we know only lasts for a moment and then we only want more. It's like this endless cycle of cravings. Oh, I just want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Okay, it's like eating my wife's brownies. I love those. I just want it, want it, want it until like the pan is almost gone. Like what the heck did I just do? It's sweet, it's good, it tastes wonderful. It's pleasurable, but is it really worth it? In the end, the third trick, integrity compromised. She says this, verse, seven, I mean, verse 15, my husband is not home. Oh, he's gone on a long journey. You know what she's saying? Hey, we're all alone. Just me and you. Nobody will know. Let's keep things quiet. Let's keep things on the down low. Nobody will know about this little one-night stand that we're having. No one will know about this one time. Isn't that the trick of the enemy? He will convince you, oh, nobody will know. I'll know, but nobody else will know. Okay, and notice what happens in verse 21. With uh, persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. Church, it just takes one time for our integrity to be compromised. And for this young man, it was a false confidential policy that he engaged. He thought he was going to get something worthwhile. Woo, fine linens of Egypt, right? Oh, this is going to be wonderful. He thought he was getting something. But what he didn't realize, that temptation, hear me out, will never, will never, ever give you what you want. It will always promise what it can't deliver. It tricks us over and over again. Now, I realize that this proverb is about an adulterous woman tempting a young man, right? Um, and this young man giving in to the, the sexual affairs of this adulterous woman. I realize that. But it also relates to all kinds of different temptations that we face. Would you agree? Isolation, right? It, it, temptation likes to give us instant gratification. It compromises our integrity. All of these tricks are still the same, no matter what you're getting tempted with. So what you said, what I asked you earlier, what tempts you and what you said in your mind, these tricks still apply. And you have to be aware of them, okay? Because the devil's a trickster. Okay, I want you to go to this next T because this is important because after he tricks us, he likes to trap us, okay? Feel that in your brain. The second T is this, temptation's traps. Now, traps are made to do what? Can I get some feedback? Okay, to trap and to kill, right? Right, I I gotta show you this picture up here. How many get satisfaction of killing rodents? I got that booger, or booger, right? Or that, oh, that rat. He was toast. I came home one night and I saw this big rat crawling across the top of my uh, garage and it was like huge, it was that. I said, you know what, I'm going to go to Home Depot and get me a trap. The trap was like that big. I got that thing, and I felt so fulfilled. How many have ever caught a rat like that before? Yes, those stinking rats here in Hawaii. No, God, that's God's creation, okay? Forgive me. Okay, no, it's not. <laughs> but see, there's all kinds of traps of temptation out there. I mean, here are just a few, and I just want to name some and see if you can identify up here on the screen. Traps of lust, okay? We talked about that one earlier. Joseph and Potiphar, okay? Read it in Genesis Genesis, um, 39. Okay, traps of power. Go ahead and read King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Traps of wealth. Read Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. See what happens to them when they be, decide to be greedy. Acts of addi- um, traps of addiction. David and Bathsheba. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 11, what does he see? He sees a beautiful woman bathing with no clothes on. He was addicted to sex. Okay, here's another addiction. It's not up on there. Um, the um, trap, uh, Traps of gossip. I didn't write that one down. Okay, 
A few years ago, or not a few years ago, many years ago, when I was walking out of the bathroom, I turned the corner and I overheard some people talking. In the bath- well, I got out of the bathroom and they were over there. They didn't know I was in the bathroom. And you know, you know who they were talking about? Me. And they weren't saying nice things. And they were people in the church. Woo! And I'm just listening. I'm listening. I didn't go around the corner. I'm just listening. And they were saying some kind things about me. I was so happy. No, they weren't. They were, they were bad-mouthing me. They were gossiping. How many of you have ever been gossiped before? And you know that someone's talking behind your back. They're backbiting you. So that late, I just let it go, and I prayed. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm so tempted right now to go over there and just, like, bulldoze them, right? And just put them into full submission, like, you know? I, didn't, I wanted to do that so bad. So the next day at church, they come in. They're talking, hey, Pastor, what's up? You're so cool. I'm like, no, you're not. No, no I know what you said. I, 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 know, I know what's going on. I confronted it. But I was so tempted, the first reaction to do was to go out there and give them a full submission, maybe a little cut to, you know, knee to the chest, you know. I don't know. I'm not a fighter. You could ask my wife. I wouldn't do that. But there's a lot of traps out there that the devil would like to get you reeled in and get you stuck. Okay, traps of foolishness, traps of pride. Are you prideful? Okay, here's an illustration. Temptation is like a riptide. How many know what a riptide is? Okay, surfers, family, we go to the beach. It's a strong ocean current where you're swimming along just fine and then when all of a sudden something tugs you in a different direction and you're going, what in the world did this happen, right? And if you're not an experienced swimmer like myself, okay, you can be swimming hard but not getting anywhere, okay? These riptides are so dangerous they can pull you in a different direction under 10 seconds, and what happens if you are, are not a good swimmer, like I said, panic sex, sets in, where you begin to go, oh my gosh, what's going on, what's going on? And I, it was interesting because I was talking to a lifeguard at Kua Bay, and he used to work on Oahu, and he told me stories of tourists coming from the mainland or around the world, um, ignoring uh, riptide warnings in, on the beach, just ignoring them, saying, oh, it's okay, you know, we're, you know, we're here in Hawaii, we can go swimming anytime we want. And uh, they go out there, and he was telling me these stories of how they would just um, begin to get pulled out there and caught in these riptides out of nowhere. And panic sets in, and a lot of them, you know, are freaking out, wailing, oh, help me, help me, and they go out there to save them. But then he also told me something that I'll never forget in our, in our conversation. He said, Sometimes folks, unfortunately, drown. I was like, no way. He's like, yeah. They drown because they, they lose their energy, they freak out, and there's not enough time to save them. Because they did not listen to these warning signs, their arrogance got them in a place of disobedience, and they drown. They die. And I felt so bad. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's horrible. As a lifeguard, you want to save every single person out in, this, out in the ocean. But riptides come, and, and, and if you're not experienced, listen, it can catch you at any given moment. And I thought, you know, it's no different with temptation, the trap of foolishness. It, it will come upon us fiercely. It, it, it will sideswipe us out of nowhere. It will come up like, upon us like a thief in the night, or it might disguise itself in a nice little package that you like. It'll just swipe swipe. But we can't be full church. We must be prepared. Because if we're not prepared and we don't understand what is tempting us, it will eventually pull us out into the deep end, ultimately leading us down a pathway to death. Do you know what death means? Die, die, die. Not just your physical body, but your soul and your spirit. Die, die, die forever. And sometimes we may think, oh, I dodged the bullet just this, this once. I got away. But let me tell you something. The mission of temptation will always be the same. It's one purpose. It's to get us to that place of death. Proverbs 5, 2, and 3, wisdom says this. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall. Heart sharp as a double-edged sword, her feet go down to death. I can't emphasize this enough. Temptation 
has one destination, and that is death. It might feel good in the moment. Hear me out. I feel you. I understand. But the goal of temptation will always lead down a pathway of death. So it's important, church, that you and I understand something. Here it is. We must understand our bait, the trap. We must not be naive of it because we don't want to get hooked and reeled in. Okay, those who like to fish, you like to catch fish, right? And you know what the fish like. You know exactly what type of bait they're going to bite on. And once they get hooked, you got them. You reel them in. And the devil is no different. He is a skilled fisherman church. He knows what bait we like. Some of you like power. Some of you like sex. Some of you like food. Some of you like alcohol. Some of you like whatever. What did you, what tempts you to stumble and fall? Because he knows that bait. You know, sometimes I hear people, when they talk about temptation and the devil, they casually say, yeah, you know, I made this decision. And you know what? The devil made me do it. That's who made me do it. Really. See, the devil can't make us do anything. We are the ones who give in to temptation. We cannot blame anybody else but ourselves when we bite and we get hooked and we get reeled in. There are so many stories that I've heard over and over so many times. People take the bait, they get hooked, they get reeled in, and you know what? The destruction happens. But how many would want to live a life where you see the bait, you see the hook, you see it there, and you go, oh, that's nice, and you go the other way? I think all of us in this room want to live like that. We want to win in this life. Now, let me just talk to you because if you are struggling... Listen, I get it. I understand. If you feel like you're in a trap right now and there's no way out, I get it. Listen carefully. Just because you say you will stop doesn't mean you will stop. I don't know how many times people tell me, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop. And they don't. The cycle keeps going over and over again. Church, that's why we need Jesus. That's why we need grace. That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. We need a higher power doing something in us when we are weak and when we're vulnerable and we're in those isolated places. We need the Holy Spirit helping us to overcome. And it's only his spirit that's going to get us through that. Not around it, but he's going to get us through whatever we're being tempted to and this is the only option to win. So wisdom will always say, hey, the church, we need to know ahead of time. We need to pre-decide with the Holy Spirit's help so it will keep us from falling back in the same patterns and habits. Man, I know this is heavy, but man, this is, this is so good at the same time. We need to understand the, the tricks, the traps, and so that we can overcome, on the bottom of your notes, I just want to close with temptation tips. These are some helpful tools that I have discovered with the Holy Spirit that in my life to help me win in this battle, okay? Because I am tempted just as much as you. These are some tips, okay? Number one, hold the line. Hold the line. What do I mean by this? Don't compromise, You, you and I cannot afford to flirt with the line. Okay, how many know what I'm talking about? The line is there. You know it's there. What is the line? It's God's standard. It's God's word. We know what God says. Don't touch. Don't eat. Don't, don't flirt. But how many of us, if this was a line right down the middle of the, the auditorium, how many know that we like to dabble in that? We like to want to see what's over here. We know this is the right side. This is the wrong side. But we want to just taste and see what is over there. Right? Come on, we're, I'm being honest. But how many like to do this? Oh, 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 oh. How many know you can't live like that? You can't have one foot in and one foot out with your relationship with Jesus. It's got to be all in or nothing. So we can't flirt about it, right? We can't flirt with that line. And when we see it, we look at it. Now, if you cross the line, listen, here's my advice. Be quick to repent and confess and get back on the other side. See, this is what will happen. We'll go to the other side. 
We'll do something that we, we like and we enjoy and we're pleasurable. It's, it's satisfying at, for the moment, and we know it's wrong. But here's, here's what will happen. The devil will say, oh, you don't need to tell anybody. And he'll keep you quiet. He'll keep you isolated. He will not allow you to open your mouth to confess and to repent. Because the moment you confess and repent, guess what? The light is shined. All of a sudden, darkness cannot handle the light. Because you decide to confess with your mouth to another brother or sister, and that's the key. Okay, yes, you, yes you, can keep, you can confess to God, but as soon as you confess to another brother or sister, guess what happens? Oh, nothing can hold you down. The light has come, and no, now you can get back on the other side of the line. And all the shame, all the guilt is broken. Because that's where the enemy likes to hold us, over here in shame and guilt. Oh, you can't tell anybody. You, you can't tell anybody. So I believe it's really important that we hold the line as best we can in confession and repentance. We got to do it, church, so, and, and because the line is the plumb line. It's God's word. We live in a day and age now, right? Come on. We, we're all honest. God's word is not the plumb line no more. What's the plumb line? Oh, what you think, right? Well, however you feel, that's the plumb line. But God's word, we believe here at Hope Chapel, will always be that plumb line. And so if we cross it, let's get back. That's what grace is, okay? Here's the second tip. This one's good. Magnify the cost. Magnify the cost. This is what I mean. I, I want you to do this. Ask yourself, what would be the worst case scenario? Think about it. If you continue to go down this road of dis destruction and disobedience, what could happen. Imagine that. Okay, put your decision or your choice under a magnifying glass and examine the future destruction of what could be if I go down this path. Then ask yourself this important question. Can you afford to live with that decision? Can you live with it? Because the decision is only made by you, no one else. And that decision may benefit others or it may destroy others. It may, it, may, it may put you in a secret place where the devil will continue to isolate you, isolate you, isolate you. Or that decision may get you out. Can you live with that? So this is my prayer for us, church. I pray for a holy fear over us a fear of the Lord to stop us from going down that road of destruction. A holy fear. A fear that says, God, I know you are God and you watch me wherever I go. You, your eyes never leave. Every place I, where I sleep, you know I sleep. Where I go, you know I go. Okay? The third tip. Plan an escape. And this is really simple, church. I'm not too complicated with this one. Plan an escape. Here it is. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> That's the escape plan. Right. I'm serious. Run, run, run. How do I know that? Proverbs 4.15, avoid it. Do not pass by it, turn from it, and pass on. In the New Testament, Paul says it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. In other words, every temptation out there is common to every person in the entire world that ever lived. There's no temptation. And God is faithful, amen? God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. He knows what you can handle. He, he knows. But when you are tempted, here it is, he will also provide an escape so that you can stand up under it. Therefore, beloved, flee. So here's the, here's the advice. Here's the wisdom. Flee. Get out. That's the plan. Don't stay. Let me tell you something. If you are rationalizing the temptation, whew, yeah, you stay too long. If you are rationalizing about it, you probably know it's, not, it's probably not the right thing to do. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Well, it's probably a little bit too late. Don't do it. Run. Okay? So three tips. Hold the line. Magnify the cost. Imagine what could happen. Okay? And then lastly, get out. Plan the escape. Just run. I want to pray for us. I want to invite the worship team on up. 
I know that this was a heavy topic, but man, when you read the book of Proverbs, church, you cannot escape this topic. There is so much about temptation and sin and the snares of life. There, it's loaded with nuggets of wisdom. This morning, I believe that we can be overcomers, though. We can win, because if Jesus could win, we can win. The Bible says that before Jesus went into the wilderness, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you will perceive and understand everything else around you. You'll be aware of what the enemy is trying to do, but you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you're not tempted. Well, you, excuse me, you will be tempted, but you will not give in. So you, as people of God, we must come before God every single day and say, God, I need you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I need a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that you would come over my mind, that you would guard my heart, that you would watch over my steps where I go, so that I may not sin against you. You know, that's what Jesus said in this Lord's Prayer, right? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so my prayer this morning is that we would be men and women filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can overcome temptation. I want to pray for us with every eye closed and head bowed. I feel like the Holy Spirit is speaking. It's like the megaphone of heaven is shouting in your heart, and you know that God is speaking to you about the things that are tempting you. And just be honest with God. Do business with God right now, because this is the moment, this is the time that he hears you. His presence is here. And just tell God, just be honest, God, I know you know what I'm tempted. I know you know the decisions I make. Just give it to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we give you those temptations. Lord, we give you those moments that we've crossed the line, and we know it. Lord, we pray that you would just shower us with your grace. Lord, shower us with your forgiveness, your love that's never ending. And Lord, discipline us, Lord, as a gentle father would. So that we can be men and women who are living in victory, not in defeat. Father, I pray that you would just guard our hearts and our minds, Lord, from the tricks and the traps of the devil and the schemes of this world. Because, Lord, we know the ultimate end game is death. Lord, we do not want to die and to die and to die. We, we don't want to live without you. So, God, I pray, Lord, for a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. If that's you this morning, I want you to just extend out your hands. Say, God, here are my hands. Receive. I receive your Holy Spirit. Because that's what you need, church. You can't do this on your own strength. You need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizing you afresh and anew. You need a, a supernatural infilling so that you can win and walk out this life. So, Father, I ask, Lord, if with every hand, every heart open, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit may baptize us afresh and anew, Lord, so that we can look at temptation. We can go out of this room and see everything in this world that tries to tempt us, God, and we can see, God, we can win with the Holy Spirit's help. We can overcome. So, Lord, bless us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Lord, we look to you, Jesus, in your good, good name. Amen? Amen. If I can have everyone stand to your feet. We're going to close with a worship song. And if you need prayer, I asked some folks earlier this morning if, if they can pray with you. We're going to be up here while the ending worship song happens. And don't be afraid to come up, say, Pastor, or, or so-and-so. I just need prayer. I'm being tempted with this. It's happening. Remember, confess and repent, the light shines. 
There's no more shame, no more fear, no more guilt. Amen. Love you, church.